Windows 11 looks really good, but compatibility looks pretty bad. Microsoft's Windows 11 event got off to a pretty rocky start. Their internal streaming platform crashed and nobody could watch it on their own systems. And Microsoft pushed people towards their Twitter streams or restreams over on YouTube. But that is not what we're here to talk about today because while Windows 11 is bringing a lot to the table and honestly, I'm pretty excited about the OS, the story behind compatibility with Windows 11 has been a mess and it's only getting worse and there's still a lot of confusion and we just kind of got to break this down to what Microsoft has said and now, Microsoft has already changed things up a couple times. So first off, there was confusion on the Windows 11 landing page. This is like Microsoft.com slash Windows 11. It's not exactly that, but like their primary landing page, Microsoft said, hey, you need TPM 2.0, which is a trusted module on the motherboard that says it's basically storing like cryptography keys. It's a part of a security mechanism. Now, a lot of people kind of freaked out about this because they thought, hey, like what if my device doesn't have TPM? How do I know and everything else? This primarily impacted people who had built custom rigs. But that being said, most chips, and I mean most chips, already have this functionality. And so TPM sort of caught like the brunt of the news. And a lot of people were thinking like, oh man, this is screwing me up. Rightfully so, because that seemed to be the lowest common denominator, but it really wasn't. So much so, in fact, actually, the pricing of TPM chips, especially on eBay at a couple listings I went and looked at, went from anywhere from like $22 up to $100 as scalpers are effectively trying to make money off of people who are now buying external TPM chips to then plug into their motherboard if it supports it. But that's not really the problem. That's not the root of the problem as we learn more. The root of the problem is actually Microsoft and what appears to be an artificial limitation. Now, they initially said uh, on their documents page, which we'll talk about here in a second, that you needed an eighth gen or newer. CPU. But this is a problem. Microsoft was actually in conflict with itself because on that same documents page, it actually said you needed a TPM chip of version 1.2 or better, as opposed to their landing page, which says you needed 2.0 or better. Microsoft had this weird terminology and it's maybe not weird internally, but they had what they called a hard floor and a soft floor. And the soft floor was 1.2 TPM. And you effectively needed a CPU that was one gigahertz with two cores or faster to be able to support Windows 11. But if your chip didn't quite have that, and more specifically where most people were running in, in, into issues was initially the TPM issue, you could work through it, right? And more specifically, if you had an older chip, such as myself, like a seventh generation chip, there was what was called a soft floor, which we all interpreted to mean that Microsoft would not officially recommend that you could run the OS, but you could, you could work around it. After tweeting out that I said, hey, Microsoft, you have two versions of what are the minimum sex. One says TPM 2.0, the other one says 1.2. They went back and updated their Microsoft documents page to say, okay, it's actually 2.0 with some vernacular also saying that you need a one gigahertz chip with two cores or more. And then they link to a bunch of lists of CPUs for Intel and AMD. Now, this created more confusion because now we've already had a revision to what was going to be the baseline requirements for Windows 11. If you're not following me here, basically Microsoft came out and said, hey, here's what the baseline is. Then they had a separate document that says, eh, it's not really that. If you have these things, it'll probably work. And then they went back and said, okay, if you have those things that will probably work, we're going to make it so you don't work. And then a conversation on Twitter with Steve Dispensa, who is the VP of PM of Microsoft Endpoint Manager and Windows Commercial, came out and said, and I asked him in very clear language, very clear language, if your CPU is not on the Intel or AMD list that Microsoft has specified, Windows 11 will not run. And that was the exact vernacular that he said, yes, if your CPU is not on one of these approved lists, you are in trouble because it's not going to run it. But the chaos doesn't end there because it sounded like, okay, if you're not on this list, you're not gonna get upgraded to Windows 11. But what chips are on these lists? Well, first off, there's some Intel Atom chips, which are just like bottom of the barrel, but more specifically, and I suspect for people listening to this video, there's a lot of people who have high end chips from a couple generations ago, specifically the seventh generation Intel chips have support for TPM 2.0, and they are also modern chips. Imagine this, I this box that I am recording this podcast on right now, or this video, is a Core i7 7700K with, I believe, 32 gigs of RAM, it might have 16, but I'm pretty sure it's 32 gigs of RAM, will not be allowed to run Windows 11. Worse than that, based on the vernacular that was used on Twitter by Steve, 
He said that if it's not on the list, it won't run. Well, my box upstairs, my primary workstation is a 7900X, which has 10 cores and 20 threads. It's running an RTX 2070 Super, 32 gigs of RAM, will not be able to run Windows 11, which makes no sense. If a little dinky Intel Atom chip can do it, then my two powerhouse boxes definitely should be able to do it too. Microsoft has promised that they're coming out with an updated blog post that will explain why magically the seventh gen chips cannot be able to run Windows 11. But it gets even worse than that. Microsoft has a PC health check application, which got off to a rocky start because that's where the TPM madness came from because a lot of people have TPM 2.0, but it wasn't enabled, so you're failing at checks, and so everybody was searching to figure out how to enable it. Once you enable it, then hopefully you should pass. But that's sort of not where the chaos ends because the Microsoft updated the application to show you exactly why you cannot pass. Now, if we take what was said on Twitter, where if, you're, if your CPU is not in this specified list, it will not be able to run Windows 11, then it should not pass the health check app. But that's not true. My 7900X box upstairs is not on Microsoft's list because it's seventh generation, the 7900X shouldn't be able to run Windows 11, and yet it passes the health check app and says, yes, you absolutely can run Windows 11 on this machine. So already Microsoft is in conflict with its clear language that if it's not on this list, it won't run, but their dedicated application that says it will run is throwing up error messages because obviously not the app isn't throwing up error message but like in my brain i'm just like all right am i updating this stuff or what's going on so it gets a little bit more frothy than that because there is an insider program from microsoft and they they put in some very bold language and i'm just going to kind of lead it read it here it says, from the Windows Insider blog, while we recommend that all PCs meet the full hardware requirements for Windows 11, we are allowing some limited exceptions as we apply these new restrictions. All Windows Insiders who have already been in installing builds from the dev channel, which is their, their closest ring, think alpha potentially even before beta, on their PCs through June 24, 2021, will be allowed to continue installing Windows 11 Insider preview builds even if their PC doesn't meet the minimum hardware requirements. So what Microsoft just said there, it says, hey, thanks for doing all of our dirty bug testing work for the next for, or for the past six years. We appreciate that. And as a gift, as a token of appreciation, if you're running a seventh gen chip, we'll let you test Windows 11, give us some good telemetry. But when it comes time to installing it, we're not going to let you do it. Like just the brazen nature of that. And I suspect that, well, I, I would say that they potentially wrote this before all this stuff kind of like played out in in like Twitterverse and, and social media and online. Um, but still, that's a pretty brazen thought that you can like, yeah, we'll let you test it, but we won't let you run the production builds because, well, that's what that's just the way the cookie crumbled um, at the end of the day. So there's like, it's really frustrating right now because and I, I suspect Microsoft has got to be frustrated as well. And hopefully they take this re this weekend to kind of reflect on everything that's going on and maybe provide some clear language, or maybe they're just going to put their head down and try to ram through the situation and just ignore everything that is going on. But I got to tell you, it's pretty frustrating that Microsoft launched Windows 11 and I'm not here to talk negatively about the OS. It's because I honestly think Windows 11 looks pretty good. Like there's a lot of good stuff in there that I'm excited about and I can't wait to start hopefully running it one day but as of right now it's a little bit confusing about if i'm going to be able to run it the problem is is microsoft's basically logistics behind the scenes of compatibility with the os and microsoft has in traditional fashion not done a great job of communicating all this uh in clear language so that we all understand why because as of right now if i were to just like roll the dice about what is actually going to happen um it's based on that soft floor stuff that microsoft has now scrubbed from the internet I suspect that if you have a device such as a 7700K sitting right here or a 7900X that may or may not be supported or whatever, I suspect that you might actually be able to install Windows 11, but Microsoft is just going to kind of close their eyes and be like, hey, this is not an officially recommended build for Windows 11 because it's missing some magical feature that we don't quite know about. They, we, that's what this blog post that we're waiting on from Microsoft is hopefully going to explain why a seventh generation chip that has a lot of horsepower is not capable of running Windows 11 in their recommended fashion. It's got to be something security related potentially, although the conspiracy theories are already out there that this is Microsoft teaming up with OEMs. It's like, hey, how are we going to keep devices selling this holiday season? Let's just not let them upgrade to Windows 11. 
I mean, it kind of like it's hard to ignore that possibility that this is where Microsoft is headed and their OEMs, you know, are frothing at the mouse thinking about how many devices they're going to sell because all these devices won't upgrade to Windows 11 and Microsoft will then look like a hero to their OEMs and they will sell lots of devices and everybody makes money except for the consumers and people like me who might have to buy two new boxes at a significant expense, which honestly I just may not even do because like this, the 7700K is fine. The 7900X is even more fine. Like they're not slow in any capacity. It's quite literally just an artificial limitation that Microsoft is placing uh, to stop this stuff. It's a really sour note on Microsoft's rich history of supporting longevity of compatibility across generations of devices, especially in the app world and even in the hardware world, they've been pretty good. The TPM 2.0, I understand is going to be an issue for some people, but realistically, I think that has been pretty much in every single chipset since about 2016. So the vast majority of people are fine there. It's the people who bought 6th and 7th gen chips that are now struggling. To make this scenario even worse, if you go buy a Surface Studio 2 from Microsoft, they are selling it right now on their store. It is a 7th gen chip that is not, by definition, capable of running Windows 11. It's like, come on, guys. So as we wait to hear how Microsoft either tries to back out of this and start supporting more chipsets or makes it really clear about what the future is for people who have high-end chipsets that are not necessarily necessarily supported, we don't quite know. And so I, I've tried not to make this like a ranting video, but the reality is, is like this is creating this is creating a lot of cloud around Microsoft and not like the good cloud, like where your data is stored and, and you can do all that stuff. But like it, it's covering up what Windows 11 should be celebrating right now. But the problem is, we don't know if we are going to be able to run Windows 11. And let's be honest, the early adopters are absolutely going to be the types of people who build their own boxes, the enthusiasts. And these are the people who right now are most confused if they can run Windows 11. So, folks, as always, keep it subscribed here because the only BS on this channel is the Windows 11 compatibility list.